queen and her prince. Their love story played out in front of the world's cameras across seven decades, and the world saw a couple who couldn't take their eyes off each other. Historians say the bond was real and unwavering from the start. The love affair blossomed almost immediately. Philip Mountbatten first caught Elizabeth's eye in the summer of 1939 during a family trip. She was 13. Philip, then the dashing Prince of Greece, was about to enlist in the Royal Navy. Princess Elizabeth saw this 18-year-old, six-foot-tall, incredibly handsome. He was nicknamed the Viking, and she fell desperately, desperately head over heels in love with him at first sight. The Second World War kept them apart, but their romance flourished. Actually, he was fighting uh, on, on pretty much all the naval fronts. So they spent years really corresponding just by mail. It was a correspondence um, love affair, really. They, they wrote letters to one another. When Philip returned, he asked King George for his daughter's hand in marriage. With the war over, the wedding was a reason to celebrate broadcast on the radio around the world. The royal carriage procession arriving at Westminster Abbey, where on the 20th of November, 1947, Elizabeth, the heiress to the British throne, married Philip, who became the Duke of Edinburgh. The young couple spent their first years of marriage in Malta, where Philip was stationed. The queen, then a princess, lived the life of a naval officer's wife, starting a family. But just five years later, her father, King George, suddenly died, and Elizabeth would become the new monarch. Philip, giving up his career and kneeling before his wife, just crowned the new Queen of Britain. This was a very modern marriage. This was uh, something that was uh, revolutionary, frankly. He was a man who was a highly competitive uh, person. The whole of the rest of the life, uh, he's got to stand two or three paces behind the most famous woman in the world. Over the decades, they danced together, met heads of state, hosted countless garden parties, enjoyed their shared love of sports. There were rocky patches, but many more smiles and happy milestones. Their devotion to each other clear. Tolerance is the one essential ingredient of any happy marriage. It may not be quite so important when things are going well, but it is absolutely vital when things get difficult. And uh, you can take it from me that the Queen has the quality of tolerance and abundance. <laughs> he has quite simply been my strength and stay all these years. Prince Philip was the longest serving Prince Consort in British history. I think anybody, anybody in the world would love to have the opportunity of a love affair that lasts over 70 years, they've managed to uh, create something truly splendid and beautiful and dutiful and passionate. And the focus now turns toward how to honor Prince Philip over the next couple of days, what his funeral services will look like. Now, typically, there would be a large procession. Crowds would be gathering along the streets. But, of course, because we're in this era that we are, uh, the government and the palace both don't want this to turn into a, a super spreader event, frankly. They need this to be COVID safe. And so it will be a much more uh, low-key affair. Uh, a lot of this is in flux, and we expect to hear more details over for the coming days, but we do know that Prince Philip's funeral service will be at Windsor, same place where he spent so much time with the Queen over the past year and where he passed away today. Guys? Yeah, not a state funeral, but and then they'll have to tone it down because of the pandemic concerns. Kelly, thank you very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.